Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. Grab yourself a cup of tea and join us for a while. It's so wonderful to be with you, and I'm very thankful for this medium of television that brings us together. And uh, what better use for television than to get the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ out there? So that's why we're here. But we also like to deal with the home, that little, you know, group that God created, little organization that he created. And when it's run properly and everybody's in their proper roles, it's just totally beneficial. So that's what we try to help you uh, to do. And so we cover a lot of topics. You know, we talk about cooking for one thing and we offer you some crafts, but also we offer you a lot of experts that can help with relationships like marriage, like parenting and all those things, educational things. We talk about health and fitness and I've said many times, you've heard me say it, we talk about anything and everything that affects the home and you know what? That's anything and everything. So I think we could be here for a long time, you know, long, long time after the Lord calls me home. This is an endless subject. Today we're talking about something I've never broached on this program, but we have an expert on today to talk about heresy. Maybe you've not even heard that word, but it deals with those organizations or people or pastors or preachers or whatever deviating from the written word of God. And I'm telling you, they can really go off the deep end and to the point that it's ridiculous, but it isn't to them. And it's downright dangerous. And I'm very, very happy to put a spotlight on it today with uh, Pastor Tom Brock. And he has a uh, show on YouTube, uh, The Pastor Study. And he has hit this very, very hard. I'm so glad he's here. And um, we'll talk about it for as much time as we have. It's really a big subject. And you're going to watch um, Stephanie and Tiffany show you how to really do a birthday party in a big way. I'm going to show you some confetti poppers. Never seen them before in my life. Before they do that, though, let me again remind you that we have some more copies of this book by Dr. Don Colbert, I Can Do This Diet. It's probably the most exhaustive book on that dreaded work diet, but it really can personalize it for you. And so you can have this book for a gift of $20 or more if you want to do that. That includes the shipping and handling, and you can call 1-800-229-0059 to use your credit card, or you can write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And um, as long as these books will last, we have just a few more, so I thought I would offer them one more time. I think it will be beneficial for you. All right, let's uh, see what Stephanie and Tiffany can teach us about having a really exciting birthday party. It is always so much fun when I have Tiffany come from Nook and Cranny. It's a DIY studio in Pinellas County, which you must check out. But it's so much more fun when she brings her daughters. They are a blast. It's television gold. You don't want to miss it, okay? <laughs> so let's find out who we have today, and then we're going to tell you what we're going to make, okay? So who, who are you? My name is Tristan, and I'm seven and a half years old. Hmm. Hi, my name is Tessa, and I just had a birthday, and I am 10 years old. Yes. Just had a birthday. How oh, exciting. Yeah. And I got my ears pierced. Oh, and she got her ears, ears pierced. The rose butterflies. Rose butterflies is what she went with. Yes, it was a big deal. So, can Tessa, t can you tell, I mean, Tristan, I'm so sorry. You, uh, you probably do that a lot, right? Um, I do it all the time. <laughs> okay. yep. Can you tell us what we're making today? Because we I make, understand you found this out. We are making confetti popples. Yes, yeah, so last week, Friday was Tessa's birthday, and we woke up, and we had candles and donuts, and then all of a sudden, Tristan pulled these out, and it was the best. Best yeah, the thing best. ever. I mean, she, and she literally made them on, made her, them own. on her own. I had she no help. It. She'd asked me to use the hot glue gun. I really, honestly, wasn't paying quite attention to exactly. It was a it's low a, temperature. It's a low temperature one. That's the one she's allowed letters. to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's the kid one. Yeah. And I was kind of half paying attention, and then all of a sudden, she just blew our minds. And it's literally a toilet paper roll, a balloon, and some cut up pieces of How paper. How old are you? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. So Tristan, why don't you tell us what, and this time we went ahead and painted some to kind of give them some color. Okay. So, okay, Tristan, okay, so you tell, tell us what, what to we're do. Doing. So 
Today we are making confetti popples. So first we are it's very fun. And mom and Tessa will be we're gonna be our up, paper cutters. And I'm going to be cutting. I'm gonna give you a little um, strip here. Some of these balloons up and gluing them on the confetti popples. Okay, so you this do that while we I do this. This is very fun, and I recommend you do this at home for with your children and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Here, these so are there yours. There you go. All right. So we're gonna and cut it up, kids. and we're gonna put it. It's Tessa cut. recommended. Tessa, yes, absolutely. So they're making confetti out we're of making, paper, and you could she's use cutting um, the top of a balloon. In yes. She looks like she's gonna cut a slit in the top of the balloon to kind of give it a little opening. Okay. And then. She's going to. Am I I'll doing let her it tell wrong? You. Okay, She's then you tell us. Am I doing it wrong? No, you're doing yeah, perfect. Okay, so you're gonna tie it. Yep. So we'll tie them, yep. and then take one of these, and then cut. You cut a hole at the bottom, and then you trace it up, and then okay, I'm done. Put it around the tube. <laughs> so you've tied the balloon where you normally tie it. Yes. You've cut a hole in the other end, and then you put it around the. Yeah. Um, oh, toilet paper. Okay. Roll. So I'm gonna do that. So you're gonna do that on all of them. Okay. And Can I trim the, trim the back? just one second. You will finish. I, I gotta do the hot glue. She's gonna do that. Yeah. She's gonna do the. Okay. Just a second. Oh, yep. All right. So move can it we along. put the confetti in the bag here? <laughs> there you go. Can I tie some for you? Yeah. Okay. Tie this one actually. Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? I Tristan, worked at a fair when I was a teenager oh, geez, one time at the balloon game. Tristan, why don't you start gluing the the polka dot one? Yeah. You start gluing the polka dot one, and I'll do this. Okay. Because this is not a 30-minute show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Though they would like for it Although, to be. you never know when that might happen. <laughs> so she's now just gluing where the balloon and the toilet paper will meet to secure it. Okay. Because when you go to pop it, you don't want it to pull pop it off. off and okay. pull apart. Gotcha. So we're going to put this confetti in the bag. Can you hold the bag? I was going to use me? tape, but then I was like, that's not going to work. It will come right off. Mm -hmm. Now, did you find a video? You said you found a video of yeah. this on YouTube? I found a video using plastic cups. That didn't work, so now I'm using She likes to test out all different things she, at the house. You know what? She's going to be an engineer. There, she did something else before where she took tube socks. She took socks. Mm -hmm. and she, she did? Didn't she cut the top of them off and then made her ponytail? She's oh yeah, yeah. she's doing, yeah. she's constantly cutting up things yeah. all, all around the house. She's gonna be our little engineer. Yeah. So yeah. are you ready? Do you want to put some in here real quick, Tess, Tristan, so we can show how it is? I know that you're still gluing that, but that way we can. That way these you can ones show are already what finished. It is. Yeah. So I'm gonna fill them all up, and we're gonna have our our moment here. Yeah. So she so we took the toilet paper roller, we cut a balloon on the top, we tied it on the bottom, hot glued it around. And okay. then it'll look like this once you're finished. So it looks like that. So yep. it's hot glued on, so it's not going to... And you can you, take you can even use colored paper so that when it pops out... And if out, you want to make somebody really mad, you could use glitter. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. A, it's like a glitter yeah. bomb. <laughs> Little mom, she's yeah. coming. Do you owe a mom something that yes. bothered your children, something noisy or loud? Have to, we'll have to put glitter we'll in it. <laughs> All right. Do you want one, okay, Stephanie? Yes. Okay, So tell me Here's what yours. to do. All right, so basically, so we go. we're going to count one, two, three. You're going to pull it back and pop it. Ready? Okay. One, one two, two, three. three. Ooh! <laughs> So the confetti sat all over our house all weekend because we celebrated all weekend. And I we didn't, love that. We didn't How much fun is days. that? Yeah, so it's you just so keep refilling fun. it, pop your balloon, and out comes the confetti. Yeah. You guys, really. <laughs> How much fun? You could, uh. Simple. And this is all stuff you probably have around Seven your house. Seven and a half. Wow. Yeah. Come on. You can do this. I promise. So we appreciate you guys being here. Happy Thanks birthday again. Thanks for having us. Thank yes. You. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing all of your engineering skills with us. <laughs> Check out Nook and Cranny. I promise you, you will not be sad. You'll be so there. happy. There yeah. And we'll catch you next time. Okay, if you all ever have a birthday party for me around here, I want, I want you to do that. That looks like fun. Hey, I'm very, very happy to introduce to you my guest, Pastor Tom Brock. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been a pastor and all that, but most of your pastoring is in TV now. Right? Yes, totally. Uh -huh. Well, welcome to uh, Homekeepers. And I have a, a, you know, a great sense of friendship with you because my, all my relatives are pastors. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, you um, with the um, Lutheran Church, yes, right. Yes. Give us give us a little background. What was it at all that made you go into the pastorate? 
I kind of had a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of being a filmmaker, and the Lord turned me around in college, and with, it'll take, a, it'll take too long, but mm -hmm. in, in His way, God told me, I want you to be a preacher and a teacher. So that's what happened, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, as we get His website up, if you go, you'll find a lot of uh, YouTube messages there. But we're talking about one today, and that is uh, heresy in the church. I'm talking about the body of Christ that takes in all these denominations, all, all the believers, mm -hmm. no matter what their tag is. Mm -hmm. And I was um, pleased to see that you would even de deal with it. Yeah. A lot of people don't know what it is. Right. So let's start with a yep. definition. For a heresy simply means false teaching. <clears throat> and uh, Arthelene, one reason I believe in the devil Mm -hmm. The Episcopal Church, the United Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church USA, the United Methodist Church, and the church that I was part of till I led my church out of it, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the same demons have invaded all these churches. And the demons are getting rid of God the Father because that's sexist and we now pray to God the Mother in some of these churches. Um, everybody goes to heaven. It's universalism. There is no hell. God is love. Um, you have the pro-transgenderism, pro-homosexuality. You have the United Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church USA, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. All those denominations pay for abortions with offering dollars. That's what really one of the big things that got my church to leave. I, I mean, we fought that. We went to the convention. And when you put your money in the plate in a UC, United Church of Christ, Presbyterian Church USA, ELCA, Lutheran Church, that can go to pay for abortion in your pastor's family. Shouldn't that be a no-brainer? Oh. But okay, let's go back though. Yeah. These denominations are split over these things because you've still got very evangelical yes. Presbyterians, Episcopalians, and uh, Lutherans. So yeah. we don't want to paint them with a broad well, brush. And, and let me explain this. For instance, uh, Lutheranism. Uh -huh. uh, I was ELCA. We tried to turn that denomination around. We finally left. And you can join what's called the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, very biblical. Lutheran Church Wisconsin Synod, Free Lutherans. Uh, in the Presbyterian realm, you can leave the liberal PCUSA and join the Presbyterian Church in America. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there are, if you want to stay Lutheran, you know, they're, you, they're a good option. Yeah. But get out of the ELCA is going to be my point when you hear mm -hmm. what I have to say now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you've, uh, you've mentioned a few areas that are so bizarre mm -hmm. that for someone like myself, you'd think it's a no-brainer. How did they get that far away from the Bible? You know, and here's the thing. Martin Luther took a stand for Scripture mm -hmm. that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, mm -hmm. and the Bible alone is our authority. Right. And you've got ELCA Lutheran professors and bishops and pastors promoting all this crud that I just mentioned. And how did they get, the, well, it, I think part of it started back in the 1920s in Germany when they had very liberal uh, the, uh, theology professors and some of our American people went over there. They brought it back from Germany. And now we've got the mess that, that it is, yeah. And why do you think so much of this centers around sexuality? We've got homosexuals, we've got the transgender, and yeah. they're pushing, pushing, oh, pushing. Yeah, and can I tell you a story on, on specifics about sure, this? Sure, sure. Last month, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and I'm sorry, it's not evangelical. It's, it's not Lutheran. I wonder if it's a church. They are in America, one out of four. Mm -hmm. But they had 31,000 teenagers for their national teen gathering. Who did the liberal leaders of the Lutheran Church put in front of these teenagers? Reverend Nadia Bowles-Weber. She's a radical ELCA Lutheran pastor. She denies that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins which is the gospel. She uses the F word in her sermons, and uh, not her sermons, but in her books and when she speaks. The F word. Now, she didn't use it in front of the kids, but what she did say in front of the kids, get this. She had them all repeat after her out loud, I renounce the lie that queerness is anything other than beauty. This is who they put in front. Then, uh, Arthelene, they brought out, this is to our teenagers. They brought out an 11, first they brought out his mother. This is a, a pastor's wife, and he, she has an 11-year-old boy who thinks she's a girl. And the pastor's wife says to 31,000 teenagers, well, when, when she was born, we thought he was a boy, but she's a girl. Then they bring out the 11-year-old. 
and the 11 year old transgender girl speaks tr promoting transgenderism and the teenagers loudly applaud her this ain't my grandma's mm -hmm. lutheran church artholy mm -hmm. and and you know nadia bowles weber again the speaker uh, she was speaking at a feminist conference months ago gloria steinem happened to be in the audience Nadia Bowles Weber said to everybody publicly that we should gather all these evangelical purity rings that girls wear mm -hmm. to be pure till marriage. We should gather them all together, melt them down into a vagina sculpture, and hand it to Gloria Steinem in thanks for all she's done. And this is this is the this Lutheran, is under the banner of a of church. the Lutheran Church. It gets worse. Can I tell you one more story? Mm -hmm. That happened last month, way back in 2009. The liberals in the church had been pushing for, pra for practicing homosexual pastors for years. They could never get it through because the laity is more conservative than the bishops and the pastors. Well, 2009 in Minneapolis, where I live, they're going to try to get it through, and they're going to get it through, and here's the story. Three o'clock, I think it was on a Wednesday afternoon, the National Lutherans all come together for their national convention to vote on whether they're, going to, whether they're going to push this smelly sex statement through to allow for homosexual marriages, etc. It's supposed to start at 3 o'clock. Out of nowhere comes a tornado to downtown Minneapolis, rips part of the roof off of the Lutheran Convention. Nobody got hurt, but it ripped part of the roof off. Across the street from the convention center is Central Lutheran Church, very large, historic, horribly liberal church that was hosting the gay lobby. That's where the gay lobby was meeting. They put up beer tents on the lawn of First Lutheran to serve beer to the convention goers, trying to get their thing through. Well, the, the tornado tore up the beer tents and there's a large iron cross at the top of Central Lutheran. The tornado tore the cross. It hung upside down for months in Minneapolis. And then they all gathered back together after the tornado left. One Lutheran pastor jokingly said, well, I hope the weather is not God com God's comment on what we're doing here. Ha ha. Yeah, and right. they went ahead and they passed the liberal sex statement by 6.6%. Six, six six so percent. it went through. <laughs> I have no doubt that God is in control of the weather. And, and you know what the liberals said about the tornado? Mm -hmm. A mighty move, a mighty wind of the Holy Spirit. You're kidding. That's what they said. That's, well, you know, they were right, well, but well, not the way they think they are. That's blasphemous. So it's horrible. Oh, the blo you know, and it blasphemous. the National Magazine of the ELCA Lutheran Church, they said the Holy Spirit is the one who moved this. To, the Holy Spirit gets blamed for whatever for, the liberals for, get through. For a lot. Yeah. Let's go to the... Uh, of course, I think that a lot of people never knew the Bible, didn't know what it said anyway. They weren't taught. I've um, said this so many times, so many times on TV, how I thank God for Sunday school, for VBS, for Children's Church, mm -hmm. uh, for those times, because I really learned the Bible growing up. Mm. I don't think these churches teach it. No, no. And it's not just the Lutherans. Oh, no. no. And no. and again, can I tell you one more story on that? Sure. I have personally struggled with same-sex attraction most of my life, but I know that behavior is a sin. I've never gone there. But um, so about seven years ago, the Presbyterian Church USA is about to do the same thing the ELCA Lutherans did. Right. And I was asked to come to their convention and to give my point of view. Artheline, I walked into the convention the gay lobby was very organized. They had knit all these rainbow, rainbow sashes to put around people's necks. I saw hundreds of these rainbow sashes around the necks of old Presbyterians that could barely walk. They'd put them around the necks of their kids. And up in, at the convention center, they had a big cross. They draped it with a rainbow banner. You went up to take communion and you had rainbow gay decorations take communion? on the communion table on the communion table. And, and so, so here's what happened. Uh, I'm going to give my point of view that, yes, I struggle with this temptation, but for the sake of my soul, 1 Corinthians 6, I'm not going there. And so I'm, I'm waiting at the, at the microphone. In front of me is a woman pastor. Oh, you must let me do these lesbian weddings. I did one last year, and the Holy Spirit was so present. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> and I got to speak mm -hmm. next. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have struggled with this temptation most of my life. 
you know, don't we care about people's eternal souls? First Corinthians 6 says if you go down that road and you don't repent, you're not going to heaven. Don't let this happen. Well, the good news is it didn't happen that year. Two years later, it happened. So again, I'd get out of the PCUSA. Yes, I know. And when that Presbyterian church split, I had a pastor on here who left because of that. And I think he lost his retirement. He yeah. lost an awful lot. God bless okay, you. I want to address something else. Mm -hmm. uh, the same-sex attraction that you uh, acknowledge, mm -hmm. I think this is one of the greatest testimonies because... In the Bible, um, a lot of people think that they have just one answer. Mm -hmm. But you've struggled with this, and you admit it, and you've lived a celibate life. Mm -hmm. I had a, a couple of my Sunday school class years ago, and their marriage was breaking up over this. And I, I looked at him, and I said, do you love the Lord enough to say that if I struggle this the rest of my life, I'm going to stay with my marriage covenant. Of course, he didn't. Mm. I think what people understand, do not understand are that when the Hebrew children were in the fire furnace, said, we know that he can deliver. Even if he doesn't. But <laughs> if not. My husband had the greatest sermon on the <laughs> but if not Christians. That's a good quote. That's a good quote. And also the more than conqueror. Mm -hmm. What is greater than conquering? That's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. And, but Paul yeah. said you can be more than. Right. Now, my husband put it this way, that that more than conquers the one that stands there that didn't conquer. Uh-huh, yeah. And, and I, I want people to understand this. Right, and you know, Arthelene, We I, all struggle with something. We all do, and some people, they, they, they get over it, and uh -huh. they get married and have kids, and it maybe is a minor nuisance. Mm -hmm. For other Christians, it's a battle till they die with the temptation. Mm -hmm. and, and what I say to people is, God never promises to take our temptations away. Mm -hmm. He, uh, and you know, in a, in a way, Arthelene, we don't choose our temptations in life. We choose what we do with them. And what exactly. is tra what's tragic to me? I mean, the the pro gay stuff now has gone through the Episcopal Church, the United Church of Christ, PCUSA, Presbyterians, ELCA, Lutherans. Right now, the big in vogue movement is transgender. That's right. I, I went to Luther Seminary in St. Paul. It was liberal when I was there. It's wacko liberal now. They brought in a transgender ELC, a Lutheran pastor, to preach to the seminarians. Do you know, according to her, that Joseph's multicolored coat can really be translated princess dress? And she promoted trans... Where'd she get I, I, I know, I know. Then she led in the Lord's Prayer. Our mother in heaven, hallowed be your name. I mean, uh, the transgenderism now is, and again, it's evil when you watch TV and, and, and the liberal media or the liberal politicians are mm -hmm. pushing this. When the church is pushing mm -hmm. that, that's from hell. That's from hell. Oh, absolute. As I said before, uh, blasphemy. Now, what happens to these churches? Mm -hmm. I have uh, some information. There's gorgeous cathedrals yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No one goes, but they, some of them have been turned into bars and restaurants. Museums, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you mentioned the, uh, is it the Church of Sweden or is it a certain denomination in Sweden? The, the, Church, of Swe the, the Church of Sweden, Lutheranism, mm -hmm. um, almost nobody goes to church now. The Bishop of Stockholm is a woman married to a woman. She suggested that they take the cross off the top of a certain church down by the harbor because they don't want to offend the Muslims. I mean, this is, this is uh, Islam. It, uh, it, it, this is a teaching called universalism, that everybody mm -hmm. goes to heaven. Arthelene, the head bishop of the ELCA Lutheran Church, was asked recently by a Chicago newspaper, Bishop Eaton, is there a hell? Her response, there may be, but I think it's empty. Jesus said there's a hell. <laughs> Jesus said there are people. But we know people that went and there this because is, this he, is the head bishop. He dealt with it. Yeah. With Lazarus. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sad. Um, now, what's the church that called God a terrorist? Uh, and they weekly worship Allah because I'm sick of these words. I'm sick of the divinity, uh, uh, not divinity, but inclusion. Oh, yeah. And yep. bringing everybody together. That again, this is happening in, in some of our Lutheran colleges, and some of our, there's a, a Lutheran church in Minneapolis that was let, letting Muslims worship in their chapel, Allah. Well, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. You don't let 
you don't bring, in, you know, this has got the Old Old Testament Jews in trouble. They were mixing Baal worship with Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. Jehovah's worship, and that got them in captivity for seven years. You have uh, the Lutheran Church likes, the ELCA Lutheran Church likes to mix in Native American spirituality with Christianity. I mean, you go to the ELCA National Magazine, there was an Indian woman who's a Christian woman, but I also uh, put out uh, uh, sacrifices for my, or, or uh, offerings for my dead relatives. I mean, just choose. I mean, <laughs> Arthelene, I'm German. Mm -hmm. My ancestors worship Thor and Woden. I'm not at all offended that we don't worship Thor and Woden mm -hmm. in my worship services. Come on. Where, where does this start? I personally believe these people never had anything in the beginning. Yeah. And, and if you've got um, Bible colleges and so forth where this is running rampant, what, what do they do with the scripture? Oh. Do, do well, they teach it at all? I, I know. Some, the, the question I get is, how can some of these liberal bishops and pastors get around the clear teaching of Scripture that Jesus is the only way, mm -hmm. John 14, 6, that homosexuality is a sin, 1 Corinthians chapter 6? How do they get around it? Well, a lot of it's pride. They're enlightened. They understand the Scriptures better than you and I do. And, and, and you know what I, I say? Arthelene, it's always safe to interpret the Bible the way the church has understood it for 2,000 years. And if 40 years ago some German theologian gets an idea that gay sex is fine, everybody's going to have an abortion rights are fine, wait a minute, 40 years versus 2,000 years, I'm going to take the, the traditional teaching of the mm -hmm. church. <laughs> Do you know what, uh, as I was going over these notes and things, and I think this could be a very broad brush for the whole body of Christ, evangelicals as well. We've lost a sense of the holiness oh, of God. Yeah. Wasn't it um, God and Moses talking and yeah. God says, whoever comes near me yeah. shall be holy. There should recently. be an awe. Today, I think I saw that, yeah. A and a wonder yeah. of being in the presence yeah. of an absolute holy God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Boy, we're out of time. God is love is what they'll say. And yeah. love means do whatever you do want. Do whatever you want to do. And it's yes. not loving uh -huh. to, to, to say that to Or people. even to discipline. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> or to even say you're wrong. <laughs> but, um, boy, you have given us a whole lot yeah. in a short amount of time, and I appreciate it. And probably some of you have never heard of some of the things we've been uh, discussing. However, they have a way of getting in, of encroaching on truth, and so the Bible says the truth will set you free, so we want you to know that on all sides. And join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.